Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture uh, of our strategic management. Okay, let's start with the benefits of strategic management. So, as you can see, there are several benefits to a firm that does uh, strategic planning. So, the principal benefit of strategic management has been to help organizations, of course, formulate better strategies Okay, through the use of of more systematic, logical, and rational approach to strategic choice. So this certainly continues to be a major benefit of strategic management. But of course, research uh, studies now indicate that the process, of course, rather than the decision or the document, is more important contribution of strategic management. And of course, it says here that communication is a key to strategic um, or to is a key to successful strategic management so um, through of course the involvement in the process in other words through the dialogue and participation of managers employees okay uh, if they become committed to supporting the organization, of course, it would lead to successful strategic management. As illustrated here, uh, these intrinsic benefits uh, of a firm engaging in strategic planning would definitely be um, of help to the organization so all firms need all employees on a mission to help the firm succeed so it's very important that that there is okay uh cooperation of the manager and all the employees so the manner in which strategic management is carried out is thus exceptionally important so a major aim of the process is to achieve the understanding of and commitment from all managers and employees so understanding may be, may be the most important benefit of strategic management of course followed by commitment okay so when managers and uh, employees understand what the organization is doing and why they often feel they are part of a firm and become um, committed to assisting it so this is especially true when employees also understand linkages between their own compensation and organizational performance okay so managers and employees become surprisingly creative and innovative when they understand and support the firm's mission objectives and strategies so a great benefit of strategic management is the opportunity that the process provides to empower individuals okay when we speak of empowerment this is basically the act of strengthening employee senses of effectiveness by encouraging them to participate in uh, decision making and to exercise initiative and imagination and of course rewarding them okay to do so so uh, as you can see it um, the strategic management would definitely result to the firm's success so this is uh, the benefit of strategic management it would empower individuals in the company which which would eventually lead to the firm's success okay all right so there are also beneficial benefits of strategic management so high performing firms tend to do systematic planning to prepare for future fluctuations in their external and internal environments firms with planning system more closely resembling strategic management theory generally exhibit superior long-term financial performance relative to their industry 
Okay. Uh, others would also include uh, non-beneficial benefits, as you can see. Um, besides helping firms avoid uh, financial demise, uh, strategic management offers other tangible uh, benefits such as um, an enhanced um, awareness of external threats, okay, an improved understanding of competitors' uh, strategies, increase employee productivity, reduce resistance to change, and a clearer understanding of performance reward relationships. So basically, strategic management enhances the problem prevention capabilities of organizations. Why? Because it promotes interaction among managers at all divisional and functional levels. Okay, now let's take a look at the strategic management okay, um, process. Let's take a look at the compre comprehensive strategic management model. So the strategic management process can be studied and applied using, of course, a model. So every model represents uh, some kind of process. So the framework, as illustrated in th this figure, is widely accepted. It's also a comprehensive model of strategic management process, uh, which represents a clear and practical approach for formulating and implementing um, uh, implementing as well as evaluating uh, strategies. So basically, identifying an organization's um, existing vision, mission, objectives, and strategies is a lo logical starting point for strategic management because a firm's present situation and condition may preclude certain strategies and may even dictate a particular course of action. So every organi organization rather, should have okay, a vision mission, objectives, and strategies, even if these elements are not consciously designed, written, or maybe communicated. So first, let's start with uh, the first process of strategic management. This is the development of vision uh, and mission statements. Okay. So, when we speak of your vision and mission, the difference is that when we speak of your vision, okay, it talks about what the business, okay, wants to become or what do they want to become. In terms of your mission, it's talking about what is their business. So, as indicated in the strategic management model, uh, clear vision and mission statements are needed uh, before alternative strategies can be formulated and implemented. So as many managers as possible, okay, or as many managers as possible should be involved in the process of developing these statements because through their involvement, people become okay, committed to an organization. So we mentioned that when we speak of your um, mission, uh, the mission statement answers the question, what is our business? The vision statement on the other hand, okay, answers the question, what do we want to become? All right. So many organizations have both a mission and a vision statement. Why is it important for a business to have mission and vision statements? So these are some of the importance or benefits of vision and mission statements. So it ensures anonymity of purpose when you say um sorry unanimity i should say okay unanimity of purpose meaning to say it's an agreement of all people involved or consensus 
of all people involved involved sorry in the organization so it also provides a basis or standard for allocating organizational resources okay it provides a general tone or organizational climate okay it serves as a focal point for individuals to identify with the organization's purpose and directions and it facilitates the translation of objectives into work structure and it helps okay specify organizational purposes and then to translate these purposes into objectives okay so these are basically the importance or benefits of vision and mission statements so the next process in your uh, strategic management model is um uh, the so-called environmental scanning so what is environmental scanning when we speak of your environmental scanning basically uh we're trying now to take a look at the environment of a business so it could be internal or external so first let's take a look at the external environment of a business so um by the way when we speak of your environmental scanning this is also um uh determining the swot or the swot analysis of your business your sw stands for strengths and weaknesses and your o T stands for opportunities and threats. So in your external environment, we have to determine, okay, the opportunities and threats in the business, right? So um, what could be the nature of an external audit or external environment scanning so the purpose of an external audit is basically to develop a finite list of opportunities that could benefit a firm and threats that should be avoided so as the term finite suggests the external audit is not aimed at developing uh, an exhaustive list of every possible uh, factors that could influence the business rather it is aimed at identifying key variables that offer actionable responses so firms should be able to re respond either offensively or defensively to the factors by formulating strategies that take advantage of external opportunities or that minimize the impact of potential threats okay so what are the factors that uh, are included in the external environment so external forces can be de can be divided into five broad categories it could be economic social cultural demographic and natural environment uh, forces could be political which includes of course uh, government and legal forces uh, technological and competitive forces for others um they refer to these as your pestel or your political environmental social technological and legal so basically the relationship or relationships among these factors um, and an organization are depicted in this figure so external trends and events such as global economic recession significantly affect products uh, services markets and organizations okay uh, worldwide all right so external forces uh affect the type of products developed the nature of positioning and market segmentation strategies the type of services offered and the choice of businesses okay to acquire or sell so external forces directly affect both suppliers and distributors uh, identifying and evaluating external opportunities and threats uh, enable organizations to develop a clear mission 
to design uh, strategies to achieve a long-term objectives and to develop policies to achieve annual uh, objectives. So changes, it says here that changes in external external forces translate into changes in consumer demand. So it could be a threat uh, if there are changes in consumer demand, but it could also be an opportunity Okay, for both industrial and consumer products and services. Okay, so to perform external audit, a company uh, first must ga gather competitive intelligence and information about economic, social, cultural, demographic, environmental, political, governmental, le legal, and technological uh, trends. So individuals can be asked to monitor various uh, sources of information. It could be um, magazines, what else? Uh, trade journals and newspapers or the internet also provides um, another source for gathering strategic information. Um, what else? Could be um, university, corporate, uh, public libraries, suppliers, distributors, salespeople, customers, uh, and competitors. These could be um, sources of various or vital uh, information. Okay, now let's take a look at the industrial organizational view or the I.O. approach. So the I.O. approach uh, determines that um, the competitive advantage okay of an organization comes from the external factors uh, they believe that these are more important than the internal factors in a firm in achieving a competitive advantage so competitive advantage is largely determined by competitive positioning within the industry um, managing strategically from the io perspective or the industrial organization uh, perspective entails firms striving to compete in attractive uh, industries avoiding weak or faltering industries and gaining a full understanding of the key factor relationships within the attractive uh, industry so io or the industrial organization uh, view provides important contributions to our understanding to how or to gain competitive advantage Okay, so now let's take a look at the external environment uh, factors. So first would be your economic forces. <clears throat> okay, so economic forces are factors such as um, ma monetary, fiscal policies, interest rates, employment, okay, inflation rate, um demographic changes and the like okay so all of these have direct impact or effect on how businesses produce and distribute their products or services so economic factors as mentioned earlier have direct impact on the potential attractiveness of various uh, strategies so for example as given here when interest rates rise funds needed for capital expansion become more costly or unavailable so when interest rates uh, rise discretionary income declines what is discretionary income this is the money left after paying your taxes and other living expenses such as food heat or electricity okay clothing etc so discretionary income is based and derived on your disposable income 
Okay, so um, discretionary, discretionary income declines when interest rates rise and the demand for discretionary goods would actually fall. What are discretionary uh, goods? Um, example for these would be my, maybe high-end apparel, entertainment, leisure activities, okay, automobiles, yeah, etc. So the demand for these goods, discretionary goods, would fall if discretionary income decline. Okay. All right. We also have here your social forces. So social forces actually are current social factors that are visible in the economy. So it can be particular beliefs, ideologies, and specific direction. Cultural forces are factors that decide what kind of culture is there in a particular region, like the traditions followed by people, their overall behavior uh, and likings, thought, patterns, lifestyle, okay, are your cultural forces. So social, cultural, demographic, and environment uh, changes have a major impact on how uh, or on all products so virtually all products services markets and customers so small or large for profit and non-profit organization in all industries are being staggered and challenged by the opportunities and threats arising from the changes in social, cultural, demographic, and environmental variables. For example, um, in terms of your cultural forces, if, um, let's say, McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's is a fast food chain known for its burger pat patties or maybe, um, yeah, hamburger. Um, but if they conduct business in, let's say, Muslim countries, um, they're not going to sell pork, okay, because, okay, uh, for Muslim countries, uh, majority of Muslim people do not really eat pork. Or maybe if they sell, um, or if they conduct business in India, uh, they might avoid selling um, beef, burger, or, uh, yeah beef burger why because in india they consider cow as holy so they have alternatives so these are the things that may affect okay the business all right we also have here your demographic forces so uh, demogra demographic forces are the ones that define things like population structure the age of people gender ratio occupational structure family size or marital status etc so like for example in japan uh it's an aging population majority of people in japan are old okay so it might uh have or this uh factor may have an influence to how a business would conduct uh their business in that particular country all right, we also have here your natural force or environment uh, forces. Uh, the natural environmental forces are the state of natural resources in an economy. So the current condition of environment. Okay. All right, next. We also have here your political government or governmental and legal uh, forces um, so for industries and firms that de depend heavily on government contracts or sub subsidies uh, political forecast can be the most important part of an external audit so changes in patent laws uh, antitrust uh, legislation tax rates and lobbying activities can affect uh, firms significantly. So the increasing global dependence or interdependence among uh, economies, markets, 
government and organizations um, makes it imperative that firms consider the possible impact of political uh, variables in the formulation and implementation of competitive strategies okay we also have here your technological uh, forces so as you can see the internet is altering economies of scale changing barriers and redefining the relationship between industries and various suppliers creditors customers and competitors so revolutionary technology changes the discoveries okay uh, revolution, revolutionary changes rather uh, and discoveries are having a dramatic impact uh, on organizations so the internet has changed the very nature of opportunities and threats uh, how by altering the life cycle of products maybe increasing the speed of distribution creating new products and services maybe erasing a limitation of traditional geographic markets and changing the historical trade between production and standardization and flexibility okay so these are some examples of um, the impact of wireless technology as you can see many airlines now offer wireless technology in flights okay we have your so-called e-ticket yeah uh, automotive for automotive vehicles are becoming wireless okay for banking visa sends a text message alert for unusual transactions not just visa but also uh, other banks also uh, for education many secondary even college students may use smartphones for math because research shows this uh, is to be great uh, this is greatly helpful okay in our current situation uh, we are using we are highly dependent on the internet because we are using canvas for our discussion okay or our lessons diba? Okay, and so on and so forth. So hotels, um, they send specials, daily specials and coupons to hotel, hotel guests via text messages and so on and so forth. Okay. Okay, so moving on, let's proceed now to the competitive forces. Um, it says here that collecting and evaluating information on competitors is essential for successful strategy formulation. So an important part of an external audit is identifying rival firms and determining their strengths, weaknesses, capabilities, opportunities, threats, objectives, and of course strategies. All right, so um here are um top u.s competitors in four different uh industries um it's identified in the this table so for beverages as you can see the top competitors are coca-cola pepsi okay uh bottling maybe coca-cola enterprises or malls on course brewing so uh for pharmaceuticals we also have here your johnson and johnson pfizer merck abbott laboratories or wyatt so these are um top u.s competitors in these industries so you have to identify your competitors identify their strengths Okay, identify also their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. So these are uh, some of the key questions about the competitors. So there, you have to identify their major strengths, weaknesses. Okay, you should also know their objectives and strategies. And maybe one another question would be 
How will the major competitors most likely respond to current economic, social, demographic, environmental, okay, and the like? Uh, the trends that would affect uh, the industry. So you can maybe benchmark from their strategies, okay, or maybe you can do better, All right? Okay, so these are some of the key questions about the competitors. All right, next, moving on. So the next process in the strategic model is the analysis of internal environment or you have to perform internal audit. So basically, all organizations have strengths and weaknesses, okay, in the functional areas of business. There are no enterprise or there is no enterprise equally strong or weak in all areas. So for example, um, Maytag, uh, it is known for its excellent production and product design whereas uh, for Procter and Gamble it is known for its superb marketing diba? so internal strengths or weaknesses coupled with external opportunities and threats and a clear statement of mission provide a basis for establishing objectives and strategies so objectives and strate strategies are established with the intention of capitalizing upon internal strengths and overcoming weaknesses okay so um a firm strengths that cannot be easily matched or imitated by competitors are called distinctive competencies. So building competitive advantages involves okay, taking advantage of distinctive competencies. So strategies are designed in part to improve a firm's weaknesses, turning them into strengths and maybe maybe sorry even into distinctive competencies all right so how will you do that okay the internal audit basically requires uh, gather, gathering and assimilating assimilating information about the firm's management okay marketing finance or accounting production uh, or operation research and development and management information system information so this is the process of performing an internal audit so basically you uh, determine the strengths and weaknesses or sorry the weaknesses you turn the strength or you turn the weaknesses rather into strengths of your company that may lead to your distinctive competences which would result to the competitive advantage of your company so performing an internal audit requires gathering assimilating and evaluating information about the firm's operations critical success, uh, success factors consisting of both of course the strengths and weaknesses so what are the internal uh, resources so when we speak of internal uh, resources okay basically we're talking about the strengths and weaknesses which are either tangible or intangible that an organization exhibits so it includes maybe the goals and objectives and culture of the organization maybe service capabilities production and supply chain capabilities could be research and development and technological capabilities human resources and financial resources so it is believed that these elements can strongly affect a company's performance and the capabilities of meeting its objectives so basically rare uh, resources that other competing fir uh, firms do not possess should be present in the organization um, 
So if many firms have the same resources, then those firms will likely implement similar strategies, um, thus giving no one a firm's uh, sustainable competitive advantage. This is not to say that resources that are common are not valuable. Uh, they do indeed aid the firm in its chance for economic prosperity. However, to sustain competitive advantage, it is more advantageous, okay, if the firm has rare resources. Okay, so this is the resource-based view. Um, they contend that organizational performance will primarily be determined by internal resources that can be grouped into three encompassing uh, categories, the physical resources, human resources, and organizational resources. So the resource-based view approach um, to competitive advantage contends that internal resources are more important for a firm than external factors in achieving uh, and sustaining competitive advantage. So what are these internal resources? So first, we have your physical resources. Uh, it includes all the plant, uh, equipment, location, technology, raw materials, and machines. Uh, for human resources, okay, uh, employees, training experience, intelligence, knowledge, skills, and capabilities. And we also have here your organizational resources, okay, the structure, the firm structure, planning process, information systems, patents, trademarks, copyrights, databases, and so on. So the RBV, okay, theory asserts that Resources uh, are actually what helps a firm exploit opportunities and neutralize threats. So, for a resource to be valuable, it uh, must be okay either rare, okay, it's hard to imitate, and not easily uh, substitutable. Okay, there you go. All right, so we'll end our lecture here. Thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you in the next lecture.